Hello and welcome to the year's first Startup TV. Today we've been joined by Amanda Ruiz. Amanda's going to be talking to us about the best way to get free PR for your business. She's going to be looking at the do's and don'ts when pitching to press. Now remember, if you've got any questions, leave them on Twitter at Made Simple Group or leave them on the Hangout and we'll ask Amanda at the end of the webinar. Right, we'll get straight to it. Amanda, hello, welcome. Hello, thank you very much for inviting me to give this webinar. No problem at all, over to you. Okay, right, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start sharing my screen with you guys. So please bear with me a second while I do this procedure. And then I'm just going to flip over to my presentation. Here we are. Oops. <laughs> here we are. It's a bit technical, doesn't it? <laughs> there you go. It's a bit techy, isn't it, at the beginning? So here we are. My name's Amanda Ruiz, and I'm known as the ultimate door opener. And thank you very much, Made Simple Group, for inviting me to give today's webinar. Today, it's secret number one, and it's all about how to find your press hook, plus we're going to do a little bit of digging for your golden nugget. What I want to do is to share with you why I can help you with your PR, why I, why I am qualified to uh, talk about how to get into the press. So I had my first taste of uh, getting into the press when I worked for my mum's business back in the 1990s. So if you want to make any calculations and see how old I am, <laughs> I'm 45. And uh, so I worked for my mum for about um, four or five years. She was running a very, very uh, successful mail order business, sorting beads from all over the world. And it was purely getting her getting into the press that we used to receive sack loads of mail. This is before email happened. Um, she managed to get a little mention into the Daily Mail and that literally catapulted her business. And we all thought, wow, PR is really powerful. I then, when I was, um, I had my first child, Felix, you can see him right there in the middle of the picture. Um, I had been working in London in various marketing agencies and I actually wanted to go off and do my own thing and become an entrepreneur. Very often, becoming an entrepreneur is something which uh, happens across you. Don't suddenly go, dream up, I want to be an entrepreneur all your life. It came to me because um, my husband, who is Peruvian, hence my Spanish surname, his, his in-laws, or rather my in-laws, were sending loads of beautiful ponchos and knitwear tops and everything to Felix. And all of the mums that I was hanging around with, they said, oh my goodness, they're beautiful. I used to get stopped on the street, and I thought, wow. This is quite similar to my mum's business, you know, the bee business. So I started sourcing children's knitwear. You see my daughter there on the right hand side as well. Then I created, it started off by being called Peruvian knitwear, but then I uh, rebranded. This is not rather like an ev uh, evolution of being an entrepreneur. I rebranded to Hum and I then started selling, you know, very elegant uh, adult wear. And during the course of running my business, I remembered the power of PR from my mum's uh, successes. So I thought, right, I really need to find more clients. They need to find me. I need to you know, put my name out there. So I single-handedly, with two very young children, managed to get my, um, my PR out there. I managed to get into Vogue, Sunday Times, Time Out, Telegraph. So my message to you, this is how the PR looks in those, it looked in those magazines. Uh, my message to you is, what well, you know, everybody can do it. So I was a very, very busy mother. I'd had a bit of experience working for my mum's uh, PR agent. So I was living in the, you know, went, used to go to Women's Home magazine and uh, find out the samples that we'd sent to them because often a uh, magazine has not very good at sending stuff back. I chatted to some journalists. So I really did, you know, I kind of was getting to know my way around doing PR. But I was doing it a bit randomly, which I have then subsequently uh, created a really great formulation on how to get into the press, which I'll tell you about in a minute. But this is just showing, you know, all these amazing names, they really did contribute to the, to the success of running my business. I then had another step to my entrepreneurial evolution and I um, became the ultimate door opener because actually whilst running my mum, sorry, running my, my knitwear business, I was actually much more enjoying, I did about 125 pop-up shops and I much more enjoyed helping other people's businesses and I found that's where my niche is. So I became the door opener and I opened people's doors to, you know, Got Kwan and to Psychologist magazine and it, everything was taking me to, the, to where I've ended up now, which is my final evolution to becoming a trainer for how to get into the press. So that's a bit of a, a bit of background about me and I just want to let you know what my mission is and that is to teach entrepreneurs a lifelong business skill which is the knowledge of self-promotion. So people think, oh dear, I don't want to self-promote. But I learned very early on in my uh, entrepreneurial life, if you're not going to self-promote, then who is? Okay, because referrals, sometimes they can dry up. So don't rely on referrals. 
So the seven secrets on how to get into the press is what I put together, and this is what I used working with my one-on-one -on -one clients. Um, and today we're going to cover off how to find your press hook and your golden nugget that the press will love. Step number two, because you have to go through a process, because when I was doing it with my knitwear business, yes, I had success, but I was being very random. I wasn't being doing it in a coherent fashion. And I did manage to get myself blacklisted, which was quite funny. But therefore, I've got something within this program which makes sure we don't get blacklisted, because basically I was, um, I used to just literally write down people's names, the journalist's names on scrappy piece of paper or actually on the magazine itself then call up and then I'd have loads of names loads of phone numbers and I didn't know who the hell I'd called and then I called one person twice and she was a fashion stylist she was up a ladder she goes Amanda please don't call me again uh, so I got blacklisted so I teach you how to put together a great uh, campaign and uh, plan of action so you I also teach you how to put together your press toolkit your press release which includes a press release template um, how to put together your PR plan of action and your, your campaign and pitch and then yes you will get in the press because if you're persistent and you're passionate and you follow the steps you will get yourselves into the press so does this sound like you you know this, this sounded like me when i was running my business i used to get really jealous of the other uh, businesses out there you know the knitwear businesses like brora peruvian connection always getting into the press i thought oh god i wish i was there my company's better or do you need to improve your sales and grow your client base or simply, is social media marketing doing your nothing? Or do you start every month thinking, where on earth are those new sales going to come from? And then you do know, because you know a bit about PR, or a lot about PR, if you do get into the press, it's going to have a huge impact on your self-confidence, because it's such a boost to get into the press. It's going to be brilliant for your brand awareness. And for your company kudos, for example, those clients, they can see you and go, yes, my, you know, the first person I buy from has been mentioned in the press. Yes, and they'll show it to their friends, and that's that. And then also you're going to get more orders as a result of getting into the press. So let's get started. But before you start, I know these aren't very trendy trainers, but they're bright and they're eye-catching. And I want you to think about these shoes, but before you do anything with regards to your uh, PR campaign. Put yourself into the shoes of the journalist. And I'm going to tell you why. Um, they literally received hundreds of emails daily. <clears throat> I did a presentation recently with Harriet Minter, who writes for The Guardian, and she says she receives 300 unsolicited emails each day. So you've got to have you know, an impressive press release, and you've got to get to know your journalist. That's the key thing, really, stalking the journalist is very important in a nice manner. Um, so you've got to have something which is uh, potentially relevant to who they are and what their interests are. And also journalists themselves, and I've called up and they go, yeah. And it's like, oh, goodness, they sound very unfriendly, but it's because they're very rushed for time and they are actually on deadline because, you know, that's the nature of, you know, printing press or online. You've always got deadlines. So therefore, they need to have the facts from you fast and succinctly. Um, I like to, I like to uh, you know, time how long I was going to be actually on the telephone for. And it's in general, if I'm put, you know, pitching something, it can be anything from 30 seconds to one and a half minutes. It doesn't sound very much, but when you're having to put something very succinctly together, you've got to have a great, strong elevator pitch and a reason why. So you know, if you can chat any longer than a minute and a half, then yes, you've made it. But if you can get over the 30 second rule, that is excellent. Um, and also, the journalists often have to pitch to their editor, who is almost like their gatekeeper. So they've got to have a good story. It may, they may love your story, but then they've got to pitch it, you know, one step further. And also, journalists do like to be treated like a human, not a number or commodity. You know, and they do like a bit of flattery. So that's a little top tip. So if you say, oh, I loved your recent article on this, that and the other, it really resonated with me, then they know that you're not doing a spray and pray campaign. And of course, they like to have a good quality story that the readers are going to enjoy. And if you have something which is an exclusive, they love to be the ones breaking the news. But you need to be careful if you want to offer an exclusive that you don't tout it around everywhere. So if it's an exclusive, it has to be that way. And don't forget to put yourself in your shoes as well. You, the reader, or your clients, uh, who are the readers of that magazine, online, offline, okay? Because think about why you read the press. Why do you? Why are you interested in one story or, or above another? It might be a human interest area. So, um, you know, why do you choose to read a story? So I'm going to give you some examples in a minute of how you can get yourself into the press. Now, it's all about press hooks. I don't know if you've heard of that expression before. They're also known as news pegs. So when you call up a journalist, you go, I'm really interested in telling you about my new tumble dryer. They'll go, well, OK, so what is the press hook? Why is that relevant to what's going on in the press at the moment? So I'll go into more depth in that in a minute. 
Definition of a press hook or a news hook is what, is make your, what makes your story relevant, time-worthy, I mean timely and newsworthy. I think that's a new portmanteau, time-worthy. I'm going to use that next. <laughs> right, and that is so why it's so important to turn on your hashtag PR DAR. Okay, I'll tell you what a PR DAR is in a minute. So what you need to do is to start reading the press that you want to appear in, understand which press your clients read, and then you need to kind of understand the newspaper, the layout, and you know when they, what and when, which days they print stories on female health or whatever your angle is. You need to understand when they do that as opposed to pitching randomly on one day if it might be the wrong day for you. So what's a PR DAR? I ask all my clients to suddenly turn on their PR DARs the minute they get uh, in touch with me. Now, a PR DAR, you might have heard of, um, you know, gay DAR, that's one there. You've got chillax, it's a portmanteau. You've got metrosexual, all sorts of things. This is my own private one, which I have invented. And it's per turning on your PR radar, okay? So what you need to start doing is turning that on. And this is one I picked out recently for a workshop I gave. And it was somebody who's in the travel industry. And it's great. That was in the evening standard and it'd be really relevant for her because now you know it's very trendy for all these adult coloring books I thought wow she could potentially do a joint venture with rough guides or she could you know get another one created I don't know what you need to do is think about what is relevant within your area and start bringing out and creating a PR DAR you know box of um, lots of snippings and clippings whenever you read the newspapers if it's relevant to you you might think gosh I want to hop on it right now but I think what you need to do is follow a few of the steps and don't just jump on it unless you think do you know what it's really ready and I'm ready to send my press release right now so here's a bit of food for thought I'm going to give you some creative examples now this was back in 2010 but I still love the story it might be you know six years old um, but this is how you can be reactive and relevant. I was working with a restaurant in Worcester, which is my hometown, and they, um, you know, they wanted to get some press coverage. And I thought, gosh, do you know what? It's going to be the England versus Italy game. And Mario Balotelli was in the press all the time with his antics and very famous for his Mohican, wasn't he? So I suggested to the restaurant uh, owner, so why don't you get your chef to design a, um, a pizza? And he said, well, let's do it. And so, yeah, look at, can you see the pizza they came up with? It's amazing. It was delicious burnt onion. And then they incorporated the flag, which was really creative. And then I called up local um, journalists. And they're always looking for new stories, always. So if you are looking for the local press, really, they, they need you. They really do need you. So you might think you're getting dusted off, but no, you're not. Anyway, so this guy said, yeah, I'll be down there in two hours, and I'll send my photographer down. And they got onto page three. So that was phenomenal. So just try and think outside of the box with your stories. Then I was working with... Um, a lady called Mahela Bertu. Now she is a fantastic leadership coach, but she's also, or and she's also Romanian. And this is this was when the, it was the time of the elections, and we managed to get her into the press onto the Jeremy Vine show as a guest because we were reacting to all the diatribe that was going on about immigration, and uh, you know the UKIP party were being very anti it. So it was really great. We managed to get her there. She was very feisty and said, you know, immigration is good. Viva immigration. So we got in there for being reactive and relevant to the time. Now this is my story, the one that got away. This is when uh, Princess Charlotte was uh, hadn't been born yet. You had crowds and crowds and crowds of people standing outside the uh, you know the hospital, and I had a client who had an opera singer, a theatre opera singer, as one of her clients because she was running a PR agency. She's running a PR agency for uh, theatre performers, and I said, well, listen, there's a huge crowd standing outside the Royal Hospital. And the only interesting thing that's happened is William and Kate have sent out, you know, a bag of croissants for the crowd and or, a, you know, or a family of ducks waddled past. That was literally and that made, you know, headline news. So I suggested, why don't you get uh, your client to dress up in a bib and tucker, you know, in his tuxedo, have a, you know, holding some red roses, bow tie, looking like James Bond because he was called, you know, the uh, operatic James Bond. He can serenade the crowd, and in so doing, he'd have the world media snapping away at him. Sadly, he didn't want to do it. Uh, we even had a hashtag we'd prepared for him. It's called a tenor for a baby. Isn't that amazing? Uh, but he just thought it wasn't very good. He thought it was a bit of a publicity stunt. Uh, so that was really sad, but that's just um, a really creative way that you can think about outside of the box how you can potentially react to what's going on at the news at the moment. 
Another way that you can get into the press is by being statistics led. So very often you'll open up a newspaper online or offline. I keep saying online, offline. I actually read physical newspapers, but I bet you a whole lot of you actually just consume your news on your iPads or your telephones. Um, but I bet you whenever you open up you know, the newspaper, you will see a survey. So here's a survey, and it was statistics-led. If you read down here, Time Out Global Dating Survey, now they put that together. And can you see the killer headline that says the British accent is more attractive than French? You think, wow, that's a bit of a, I don't believe that. So you immediately want to read the article. But then you kind of, uh, you can actually kind of uh, look at it and think, actually, I don't know why they did it. They just wanted to get their uh, global dating out, you know, out in the open. But that was a very clever way of doing it. So if you guys can think of any ways you can do a survey and potentially think about the headline before you even do the survey, let's see, or do the survey, and then another amazing headline might come out of the result of it. Another way to get into the press is by being seasonal. So I don't know how, what other you know seasonal businesses that you guys uh, run, um, but anyway, if you look at January, it's all about detoxing. It's about the January sales. It's all about the new you. You know what are you doing about your fitness? So if you run a you know fitness label or you know you might be a psychologist, whatever you might there might be lots of areas within January that you could have been pitching to the press. If it's magazines, you need to remember that they are six months in advance. You need to be quite advanced with your, um, you know, with your pitching. But then look at just look down at the seasonal calendar. These are just a few examples, but I'm sure that you could, you guys could just fill it out even, you know, so much further. So February, you've got the inevitable Valentine's Day. So if you do chocolates, wedding dresses, um, you know, gifts and all that kind of stuff, then you've got Easter preparations. April, you've got the uh, Easter is, you know, Easter then. Then you've got the boat race. So it could be anything for, uh, you know, rowing gear or, you know, running, anything like that. Uh, May, you've got lots of bank holidays and you've got Mother's Day. In June, it's all about summer is coming. You've got picnics, fitness, wedding, Wimbledon, July, holidays, travel. And you can, you know, you can read through the whole list. Um, but, you know, basically think about what your business does and when people need your services most, when people order your services most, that is the month that you need to uh, pinpoint that you really want to get into the press and work backwards if you're looking at getting into magazines. And here's an example that I was working in Colchester, where I now live, and it was a campaign for the independent uh, retailers. And basically, it was a campaign to get to drive traffic, you know, to drive footfall into the shops. And that was a great campaign, but we managed to get into the local press. Again, I just literally had to call them up, tell them about the story, and they go, yeah, we're on it, we'll uh, send a photographer down there. And um, again, be getting into the local press, my secret tip there is they need you they need to go you know they need to uh, publish you if you've got something which is good which you're offering it might be new jobs in the area why is it going to benefit the readers in your local area okay um you know i know that there's a comedian or somebody who runs a comedy house so you know you could get into the press by um you know you might have somebody who's actually a homegrown piece of talent and he's suddenly really really famous and then he's going to come to your comedy store so just think why but also these people the local journalists they really need to uh, hear from you and don't get disheartened if they go no not interested you probably just aren't pushing their buttons right and also i would say another really hot tip is that when you're trying to get into the press whether it's local or national, just do a bit of stalking. I mentioned it earlier, but you need to see what they're what they're um, what they like. You can check that out on their LinkedIn profiles. You can also look at their Twitter profiles and see. You know, it might say, "I'm you know I love you know cocker spaniels." So I managed to get my client into the press because she had she had a cocker spaniel. I've got a Springer spaniel. So just what is your common ground? That really does help. Then I got another client into the press, into the Cambridge Mag magazine, because she runs a luxury B&B in Newmarket. She, her cooking is absolutely out of this world. And, um, you know, and I just thought, well, she really deserves to be featured into the press because she runs an amazing B&B and her cookery is stunning. So uh, we sent some uh, lovely brownies to the local uh, magazine editor. She devoured them and thought, wow, they are beautiful. So we wanted to know more about this very talented lady. I'm going to tell you something about her later on as well. A gold nugget about hers and then another way uh, within your business is you might be able to depending on what you do I was working for a client who um, uncovers you know scurrilous um, loopholes and stuff with contracts when you're when you're doing contracts for schools and uh, office equipment and anyway, we managed to get a full full page spread there and as a result he's actually changed a whole industry and he's had a whole you know massive amount of new clients as a result of getting into the press it's really really powerful stuff 
And another way to get into the press by you appearing as an expert. So I don't really consider this as well. So um, I've got a client called Dee Gibson, and we managed to set the agenda for the Daily Mail that day because um, it was all about how to spot an up-and-coming area. That was one of the areas of expertise that Dee, that Dee has, you know, developing properties. I even sniff out a good area. So she set the agenda, and she got quite a lot of column inches there because she was the actual expert. He, the guy also, the journalist also asked other people, but she probably got the bulk of the press there. And then there's another client, Tamsin Gary, who she's a leading expert in vision and mindset. She had actually visioned herself to get into Psychologist magazine. And uh, so she asked me to help her, which I did. And the woman, the um, editor, has a spirit, has a caucus on your set. was my kind of, I set her my new puppy picture. <laughs> I don't know whether she saw it, but I feel that, that was one of the reasons why I managed to have a good conversation with her. But we got her into the press and she managed to have a four page spread, which was phenomenal. And then if you look at um, the Evening Standard, you know, Joan Malone, yes, she's very, very famous, but yet she, she runs an Ask Joe. So can you think, you know, I could have an Ask Amanda for my local press, or I could have an Ask Amanda about PR in, you know, Elite magazine. So just think what areas, which areas you think you also could have um, a piece, have a column. Another way you can get into the press is by having a profile piece. So, um, you know, local, I got, you know, became friendly with the local journalist and so she just said, Amanda, I'm always looking for stories, I'm always looking for people, I need to have a piece on my favourite room, can you do it? And I said, yeah, of course. Um, so they liked me because I've, you know, I'm out of Peruvian, that photograph, I, my mother actually took me went on tour to Peru. Uh, you know, they like to know the background about you. So what's, what is interesting that stands out about you with your profile? Or, please excuse the racket outside, it's the bin man. Um, or, the, or you might be an award winner. Have you won an award recently? That's not necessarily newsworthy, but what hoops and loops do you have to go through in order to set up your business, in order to then, you know, all the interview process, you know, what you can, you can make a story about all of that, okay? And then you might also offer product. So this is my lovely pom-pom scarf, which I had in the press uh, back in 2010, I think it was, or 2008. It's very fashionable, and that's why I should have really <laughs> kept it on. Um, so yes, that's another way, just so to talk to the shopping editors and showing lovely white, you know, cut-out images. If it's a cut-out, you've got more chance of being featured because it's, you know, the background isn't messy, and they can just drop it into a, uh, a page very easily. And then I managed to, after a lot of persuasion, you know, trying to get into the press, it's not just an overnight thing. It took me a good six months to chat up uh, the journalist here, Flora Stubbs, and I think she got so annoyed with me calling her every other week. She goes, okay, Amanda, I'll speak to you in May. May came around, I had my diary. Hi, Flora, you told me to call you in May. <laughs> and she was thinking, oh, God, I'm a woman again. Anyway, but she got me in, you know, she put, the, put my uh, poncho there. If you can see the uh, right-hand side, that hat and the pom-pom thing. So you've got to be persistent, um, but it's also about placement, you know, with the shopping editors. So, okay, guys, how do I get into the press? Number one, you've got to research, research the paper, read the papers, research the papers you want to appear in, and think like a journalist boss, why will our readers want to read this story, okay? Now we're just going to touch on the golden nuggets. The golden nuggets is what you know people love about my course because that's kind of really interesting, digging deep about your business, what makes you stand out from the crowd. Because every individual is different and every individual has a different story to tell. I'm going to give you some examples here. What I can do is invite you to go to my website. So it's amandaruiz.co.uk forward slash golden hyphen nuggets. Okay. And you'll go to uh, the worksheet, it's my form, it's a worksheet you can go through about, you know, why you are different, why you stand out from the crowd. And this is, this golden nugget sheet is something which you can do with a friend, a partner, your husband, your business partner, because very often your golden nugget is something that you've told so many times or your family know you for so well that you think, God, it's really boring, it's just been over told. But actually, the journalist who wants to hear from you would love to hear that golden nugget. So here's my golden nugget for um, Greta, who ran the luxury B&B. Uh, the journalist, when she was interviewing her, was digging deeper and deeper and deeper, because I had dug deep with Greta, and it turned out that she used to be a food stylist, and she used to be a professional chef, which is why her food was so delicious. But then the journalist from Cambridge and News uh, dug that actually she used to work in the BBC canteen and used to prepare Sir Terry Wogan's omelette before his breakfast show. 
Now that's a golden nugget if I've ever heard one. <laughs> so my golden nugget, you know, could be the fact that I have I have a Peruvian heritage, or I used to play uh, lacrosse for England. So that's quite a uh, you know go gettery sport. So maybe that's why I'm quite go gettery getting into the press. Don't know that could be one. Uh, and a few more examples. Uh, recently, you know that Tyson Fury got into the press. Sorry, won. You know, in a huge competition, huge boxing match. And I love the golden nugget here. It says Tyson Fury used to spar with his brother Shane in the family kitchen using tea towels as boxing gloves. Okay, that's his golden nugget. And then another golden nugget from the Evening Standard back in November was, you know, an interesting piece about an entre some entrepreneurs setting up a new business. But then if you read it, you know, there they are, the three of them there. And then it says, as Ligue, a keen, this is her golden nugget, a keen tango dancer and polo player describes it. OK, if it just said as Ligue describes it, you say, oh, right, whatever, it's just a bit boring. But, you know, the fact that she's a tango dancer, polo player really sets her out from the crowd already, doesn't it? So hopefully I've inspired you guys to think differently. Hopefully I've given you some new ideas. And what I'd like to do is to offer you something which will really help you jumpstart your PR for 2016. It's the course, it's called the Jump Starters course, and it's all about how to get into the presence following those seven steps. So number one, we've just, you know, they, we've gone over it, but you know, you can go into much more detail about your press so you can, you know, work on the worksheets and your golden nugget. And it's also really important to understand who is your customer, what's the customer avatar, and um, who is you know who is the journalist. You need to choose three or four journalists who you want to really, really get to know. Who's the competition? What are they doing differently? So you know you need to do a lot of research. Then you need to put together your press toolkit, and then uh, we go over your press release and we include a template for you to use. And uh, the biography, so your biography is really important. You can have an eight-word eight biography, you can have a two-liner, you can have a whole page bio, but the press, whenever you want to pitch to the press, you'll need to get your bio sorted out. And then your PR plan of action, that is when you're not going to get blacklisted. So you'll have a spreadsheet which you can uh, fill, out, fill out the blanks very succinctly. And then your, PR cam sorry, then your PR campaign and your pitch, what to say, what not to say when talking to the press, because yes, I've got the t-shirt and what not to say. And then success, you're in the press, what next and how to leverage it. But before I tell you about anything else, I'd like to tell you some case studies of people who've actually gone out there, some of my clients. Hayley Bystrom, she runs a um, very high-end uh, matchmaking agency, and she hopped on to hashtag journo request. I don't know whether you know that already. And she got herself into the Daily Mail, or the Daily Mail, I don't know whether it's published yet, but literally she reacted. And she got there, she reacted with a good story, and then next minute the, um, you know, the hair and makeup are coming to film her relaxing on the train, which that was the whole story about. And then this was the lady I was telling about who had the client who was the um, opera singer. And within six weeks of doing my course, she was literally down at the BBC. So that was a really great result with her opera singer. And he was, uh, you know, I think he had about two or three songs that he sung. He was there for, for two hours, which was great. And then uh, two other success stories, a client from America. She managed to get herself into a great um, blog, which she really needed to get into because it was relevant to her business. And then Solveig Malvik, who is in Denmark, she's a charisma coach. She managed to get her friend, using my tips, into Forbes magazine. So your investment, it's not a, a thousand pounds. If you go to my website, you'll see the link shortly. I'm offering it for you guys for the Made Simple um, webinar watchers to become hashtag visible. It's 500 pounds. So if you go to amandaruiz.co.uk, that's my website, you'll see in one of the top tabs, and it's called the Amazing DIY PR Course. The prices are in dollars, um, but it's, you know, a thousand, you know, a thousand pounds will be the UK price. But if you use the code Made Simple 16, all in capital letters, when you go to the coupon, then you've got it for uh, just 500 pounds. It will show $750. Okay, and that offer is valid until the 15th of February. So I'm going to throw in a bonus for you guys as well. Fancy having this, a full list of all your database of all the people you want to get in touch with. I used to have to go to WH Smith's and buy all the magazines. <laughs> I've now got, I am now, you know, I use a database, which I will, if you say to me, Amanda, I want to get all the business, you know, business journalists, please give it to me. I'll give that to you. And that value to get these databases, you know, it's, you know, you sign up for you could sign up for a contract for two thousand pounds per annum, but literally to get one to get you kick started, the value of this is two hundred fifty pounds. But I'm going to give that to you free if you join using the code Made Simple sixteen. Wow. So all I can say to you is a big thank you for uh, listening.
Thank you, Amanda. Thanks, Amanda. That was brilliant. And um, we have had a couple of questions come through. Um, I'm just going to read through them now. But first yeah. one, is Nigel. Um, this is our, our comedian. So he, he runs a couple of comedy shows. He's asking, how do I get local press to take notice of them? What should I put in a press release? How should, long should a press release be? And how do I then convert that press interest into actual ticket sales? Oh, right. Okay. <laughs> so very slowly. So no, point number one was how do I get in? How do I get into into the press? Was it into the local press? So how do I get the local press to take notice of them or his shows? Yes. Okay. So a secret is I used to go out with a journalist. He used to write for um, the a big newspaper. I can't remember. He used to say, you know, local journalists. Sorry, local journalists, because they're cutting. Often, big journals are actually cutting their teeth in the local press. And he said to me um, that they, once upon a time they had to invent a story. I, I won't say what the story was, but they basically had to invent a story about a rat infestation, blah blah and blah. Didn't actually exist because they had no stories to write about that day. So I've clung on to that, and basically, you just need to uh, get to know. You know what I'm trying to say is that people, the, the local journalists are desperate for the stories, even though they might be very standoffish and try to be, you know, yeah, I'm too big for you, whatever. Actually, they want to hear stories. And um, what I recommend you do is do a bit of Twitter stalking to that very journal, to the journalist. I think you need to choose about one to two or three key journals within your local area, different magazines, different publications, and stalk them uh, on Twitter and look at their LinkedIn profiles, as I said earlier. Get to know them. And then you might have some common ground. They might, you, you know, they might be a rugby player and you might be a rugby whatever. There might be something which is in common. So that's one thing. Um, and they're going to say, okay, great, so that's one thing in common. Why do I need to get you into the press? And it might be because you've got a, um, you know, an interesting new person who's going to be doing one of your stand-ups. And he might be a local guy, might be someone who's done good. You know, there might be a really great story. So just try and think. I mean, now you've had this, um, you've listened to the webinar, you might, you might have suddenly had some, um, you know, brainwaves there. What was the next question about? Was it so press release? Was, uh, press release how long should it be? Okay, so the press release should... Okay, so I've told you that the journalists, they literally get bombarded with emails day in, day out, and their inboxes are like that. My key, key tip for a press release is actually, first of all, don't put, it in the, don't put it as an attachment because they're so busy they can't be bothered to click on anything. Okay, so put it down in the body of your email. Second thing is you've got to have a good title. OK, because if it's just a really boring one press release, you know, comedy show opens in Hadley, whatever, that's not great. But you need to say, you know, um, Ricky Gervais, looky likey coming to, you know, coming to Bognor Regis. So, I mean, you know, do you just need to be a bit more, I call it jazz hands or Harriet Minter called it jazz hands. And I love the jazz hands. She says, don't be jazz handsy, but I say do, because that's the only way I've managed to get into the. Have three lines, at the, you know, just really summarize it and you know put it very very um easily easily understood okay so just keep it short and sexy good english and and you sometimes uh, the journalists actually want to copy copy and paste what you've written so make sure it's you know all the facts are verified and you're not doing any you know fancy stuff as in i can't say bs but you know <laughs> don't fake what your story's about <laughs> <laughs> Oh, am I allowed to swear on Sun Up TV? No, exactly. <laughs> you can beep it out in the recording. Okay. How do you convert a press release into ticket sales? Well, I suppose that is really by getting, by chatting up the journal, finding a good story, newspaper having a call to action and this is a real key thing as well that people really forget when you have got the journalist interested and they're going to say yes we're going to publish you don't forget the key points which is please can you mention my website and please can you make sure you spell my name right and if possible you know can you put my email address or whatever and they'll go no you can't do that because that's like advertising but you need basically if you don't ask you won't get so make sure everything is linking just say please can you mention that that comedy show is going to be on the 15th, 14th of feb and uh, it's at x place blah 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 and you can book tickets here okay brilliant um, we've probably got time for one more question i think you'll like this one uh, it's from daniel and he just wanted to confirm how long that official offer is running by. Oh, the offer, yeah. So that's the made up, made simple offer. I'm looking at startup here. Made simple offer is valid until 
is it the 14th of Feb or 15th? I can't remember what date I said, but basically, I think it's the 14th on um, basically a month hence. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> did you learn anything, guys? What did you pull out of it? Oh, it's brilliant. Like, I'm always interested in press releases because I have to write a few of them, so that's quite handy to know how long they have to be. Yeah. Yes, keep them short and succinct is all I can say. And uh, anybody who's watching, you know, masses of luck getting into the press. You have to be persistent um, and don't get put off at the first no because you will get a lot of no's. And yes, I've had a lot of no's. And that's probably where my lacrosse playing ah, <laughs> that has come into it because I just think, you know, I want to, you know, and also you really need to think about this. Why you, do you want to get yourself into the press? It's to put bread on the table. You're running a business to feed your kids or have that luxury lifestyle. The minute you get into the press, you should get some orders or new people finding out about you, which will then increase your revenue. So you're thinking, right, I'm going to do it. If that person says no, I'm just going to call up another person. Yeah? <laughs> That's how I went about it anyway. Yeah, Amanda. <laughs> um, I use the hashtag Gina request quite a lot, actually, as well. That's great on Twitter. Plus the journalists now are all over Twitter, aren't they? And that is yes. an active hashtag. So I just use that with Jeff's social media. Um, oh, brilliant. Well done. I recommend that, definitely. You've also got PR hashtag PR request as well. Yeah, yeah. Which you probably use. Good. Okay. Well, that's excellent. Fantastic. Well, I think that's all we've got time for yeah. today. Um, thank you so much, Amanda, for joining us. It's been fantastic, very inspiring, motivational, and useful um, talk there that you've given. Um, next week, no, next month. Next month. So on the 19th of February, we're joined by pre agent. Uh, Emily's joining us again. She joined us a few months ago, and she's presenting Soul Traders v. Limited Companies. So join us for that. Yeah. Lovely. Thanks again, Amanda. And see everybody later. Bye. See you later. Thank you very much for attending. Bye.